recording now. So let's first go over what we are going to be doing tonight. So we're going to talk about J JSA, who um, you guys are. I want to hear a little bit from you, so heads up. I'm going to unmute you guys in a little bit. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be a JSA advisor, tips, um, provide you guys some tips, um, chapter activities. We'll talk a little bit of chapter of the year award. Um, more tips. Um, we're going to go over some problem scenarios to kind of uh, role play anything that, you know, potentially things that might go wrong as a, in a chapter. And if you guys have any questions, that's a really great time that we can maybe bring some of those together. But also at any time, if you guys have questions, feel free to use some of the chat features that you guys have on your screen. Um, you guys can raise your hand, do a little question mark. You guys can also um, send me questions and I can see them. So even if you guys are muted, uh, feel free to um, send a little, uh, yeah, I see a lot of exclamation points going now. Very good, you guys. Um, I hope that means that you guys are fine and that um, you guys aren't like already at having like a lot of questions. Um, and then we're going to go over some contact information so that if you guys have um, never met your, your program director for your various states. We'll have that information for you at the end. And then we'll go over some next steps for you guys. If you guys have um, very brand new uh, to JSA, some uh, resources at the end. So let's go next slide. Okay, so what is JSA? So really quick, briefly, if you guys are brand new to JSA, we are um, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization, and we work with high school students, really hoping to engage them in civics and political discourse, getting them involved so that when they, um, you know, graduate, go on and, and become adults, that they are ready to be responsible and engaged in um, our democracy, right? Big time um, voters and things like that. We also just recently rolled out a new value statement. And this is a really great tool um, or a resource for you guys that when you guys are talking about JSA and what JSA can bring to your school and to your students, these are the values that we really want to impart upon our students and what things that they'll take away from being involved with JSA. So leadership skills, accountability, empowerment, oh I'm reading that backwards, empowerment, accountability, and diversity and inclusion. So I'm going to read um, our value statement. You can also find it online and probably on Facebook. Um, so bear with me as a person who's dyslexic, reading aloud is a little bit of a nightmare, but um, please bear with me. Um, so JSA, we believe in lifelong engagement with others to affect positive change. We practice learning by doing, using a student-run and student-led model wherever possible. We support creative problem solving, communication, delegation, and diplomacy. We embrace challenge, failure, and reflection as opportunities for growth. Empowerment. We believe everyone should have the skills, resources, and opportunities to make their voices heard and generate impact. We promote informed and constructive dialogue through dialogue, debate, collaboration, and public speaking. We encourage service with peers, communities, and government. We offer access to college level curriculum that teaches critical thinking, research skills, and analyzing and evaluating information. Accountability. We believe in being informed, improving ourselves, and playing active and positive roles in community and country. We take ownership of our words, decisions, and their consequences. We live up to our commitments. And lastly, diversity. We believe in active and equitable participation. We support opportunities for all. We negotiate and create a constructive environment for open-minded engagement and growth. Through respectful dialogue, sharing perspectives, and challenging ourselves in each other, we explore differences, foster understanding, and learn collaboratively. Together, we are the Junior State of America. So this is a really great, you know, one page on JSA that when talking to others and maybe administration or people who are interested in joining your chapter, that these are the skills that we want our students to take away and that we ourselves hold very important and we want to teach to our student leaders moving forward. So this is something that you'll probably hear a lot more going forward. We just rolled this out earlier um, this year 
And we're going to try to incorporate this more. You might have seen it already in some registration materials um, online, like I said. And you'll probably hear about it at our conventions in one day if you guys go to those. So who's here? So I have a handful of people on the um, call with me. I'm going to just go down alphabetically by first name, maybe, or whatever popped up in my, my screen. Um, and just really, if you want to just introduce yourselves, um, maybe say where you go to school or where you live. Um, if you are a teacher, what subject you teach, and you know how long you've been in JSA or how long you've been um, participating or um, maybe something else. You don't have to do every last one, but just a quick intro. Um, and so, Evie, I'm going to send an unmute request. Evie, are you with me? I'm with you. Yeah. Do you want to do a quick uh, intro? Sure. <laughs> Thank Hi, you. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Ventura. Um, I am the school year program administrator, so I oversee all of JSA's year-round programming across all 10 of our states and regions. Uh, we're excited to kind of kickstart our uh, JSA school year. Um, uh, this month, we're kind of in full swing and to be able to provide resources like this to our teacher advisor. So happy that you all could join us. Awesome. Thank you, Evie. And um, Catherine, um, I've unmuted you. Would you like to just say a quick hello and a little bit about yourself? I'm Catherine Hill. I'm at Encinal High School in Alameda, and I teach government. It's my first year teaching government. Um, I taught eighth grade history for a long time. Um, and my students approached me, wanted to do a JSA program, and I'm up for it, so I know nothing. Yay! Thanks. Welcome. Okay, so hopefully I'll be able to answer any of your questions, and if not, we um, can chat afterwards if you have anything else, um, or get you in contact with your program director and do some more um, help if, the, if he needs to. Um, so Marie, oh, I've tried to unmute you. Um, Okay, it's not letting me unmute you. So if you see something on your side, please let me know and then uh, we can hear from you. But let's move over to Nikki, Nikki Vasquez. Are you there? I am here, hello. Hi. Hi, um, I am Nikki Vasquez and um, I'm actually part of the John Long Middle School chapter. I think we're the only uh, middle school chapter. So we're the the odd ducks of the group. Um, mm -hmm. Last year was our first full year um, of doing J JSA and they the kids love it and they hit the ground running and um, they're excited again for the next year. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, let's go on to Rafa. Am I saying that correctly? Rafa, are you there? Uh, yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh -huh. We said Rafa, right? Yes. Yes, okay, I can't hear that well, sorry. Yeah, my daughter goes to communications high school. I'm actually a physician, but I volunteer, so I'm a parent volunteer, and I'm the advisor for the chapter. We started last year, and we're looking forward for another great year. Awesome, yeah, we um, definitely sometimes have parents who help chaperone, and those that's really awesome, too. I appreciate any, um, any help that we can get. Okay. Beth, I unmuted you. Would you like to do a quick introduction? Uh, sure. I'm Beth Hager. I'm the uh, Arizona Program Director for JSA. So I um, work with uh, students and teachers in Arizona and a couple in New Mexico. So, um, yeah. Good evening. Awesome. awesome. Welcome, Beth. Yeah, so we have a few other staff on here um, joining because this is a really great resource that we're hoping to share out um, to others as well, and then potentially do it um, more along the way. So um, thank you guys for taking a little bit of time out of your evening um, to learn a little bit more about how you guys can work with us and support uh, our student leaders in your um, chapters. So um, moving forward, so where do you fall? So this is a quick little map of, of the United States, but it shows the different states. So when we talk about states, we really talk about different regions or territories within the United States. So I'm the Southern California program director. You can see it's kind of a weird, funny shaped one that inco incorporates a little bit of Las Vegas as well. And Arizona, while it's Arizona, it's actually really quite big and goes actually into a little bit of um, New Mexico, right? So these different areas, especially over here on the, the East Coast, are a little bit wider. This basically means 
who your program director is, who your student leadership, your um, on a state level leadership, they may be coming from this whole region. And the different chapters and stuff within there may all join together for conventions or one day activities. So beyond your school and chapter level, you can engage with JSA on a state level. So depending on where you're from, uh, this is going to be potentially your state. So it's a little bit different when we say state, we mean um, these territories. So why JSA? Um, so there's a lot of different, you know, uh, other chapter, other clubs out there that your students could be a part of. And if we have anyone who's been on the line for a little bit, maybe um, Catherine, maybe you can speak a little bit if you'd like. JSA is a little different from, say, speech and debate or other government clubs. For one, we are nonpartisan, or you all may also hear us say all partisan. And while we do debates, we are not super competitive within our debate structure, right? It's definitely structured and we have rules and we have um, procedures that we follow, but it's not as competitive and point based system kind of thing. It's much more educational. And I like to think of our debates as more of a conversation, right? There, this, the point of our debates is really for students to learn and engage with different um, topics, often very complex and mature topics. Um, so while there are awards and things like that, it's way less competitive. And we are also student led. So we give the, the, the skills to the students that they can run the programs, they can run their chapters, they can run um, state activities, definitely with some adult um, support. But we want the students to really run with it and explore and learn through doing that. So I've talked to some people who ask me about, you know, debate structure and team size and things like that. And it's really quite different, right? It's an opportunity for, for students who are interested and engaged with political topics um, who might be a little bit keyed into the news and things that are going on. Um, in our government to have a space where they can explore those and hopefully make sense of those a little bit. So what is a teacher advisor? So what is your role? Um, even as parents, you know, how can you help with this whole JSA club thing? Um, so really JSA advisors have many roles, but really what I like to think of first and foremost is be an educational partner to your chapter or to your students in, in, in JSA. Um, like I said, they're going to be discussing some pretty mature topics and they may not really have the, the background, um, the historical perspectives or, you know, political um, know how to really understand some of the things that are going on. So you can be a person that can help them explain some of these things to them. Um, but really keep in mind that JSA is student led and student run. So while you are necessary and needed, um, you are really there to kind of be um, a, a guide and, and provide encouragement and support and let the students lead and to let them learn by doing that. And this balance, finding this balance between these two, you know, things of, you know, being involved, but stepping back can be a little bit challenging, um, but it's definitely rewarding. So we're going to talk about JSA on a chapter level and then also JSA at conventions. So first on a chapter level, so at your school, at your campus, um, really educational mentor, mentorship like I just spoke about, um, but also advise on chapter maintenance. So for things that uh, a new leader, a new chapter president may not know about, you know, help with paperwork, help with dates and deadlines, right? When club rushes and what needs to get done for that kind of stuff. Maybe potentially um, collecting, you know, taxes or dues that your, your school might do or, or for JSA. Collecting um, any other paperwork that you guys might do, planning and running chapter activities, um, handing out information, things like that on a chapter level, kind of a week to week or however frequently you guys have meetings help with that kind of stuff, especially in the beginning when you have a new leader and things are just starting off for him or her. And then uh, bridge the gap from year to year. So we often have student leaders who graduate and it's really quite sad. I, um, I really, it's challenging. You get really close to a student and then they graduate. 
Um, so with that, they often take a lot of really great um, JSA knowledge, and they may not, you know, write it all down or keep it all in one spot. So you can be a person who helps bridge that from year to year so that the new year isn't really starting from scratch, that you still have ideas of what chapter meetings were like from the year before or when dates were for, you know, various activities or, you know, you know how to register for a convention or things like that. If you are um, been involved with JSA for a little more than just one year, you probably have some um, really great experience with things like that, especially if you w uh, went to conventions or one days. So you're going to help with that kind of maintenance so that you don't just lose everything with a new school year. And then really you are an advocate of JSA to other people in your school, um, potentially school officials or administration that may not be super easy to work with, um, to other teachers to let them know that this is a great opportunity on campus, that they should um, promote it as well, encourage, especially in other like government classes, economics, um, you know, political science, history, things like that. Those teachers really encourage them to get on board and then um, outside in the community, right? So we wanna take JSA off campus and not just stay in a meeting space or in your classroom. We want other people to know about it. And so letting people know, you know, maybe political leaders or community leaders about the work that your students are doing and really advocate and push for these students and help them um, be even more successful in some of their chapter activities. So I'm going to ask, does anyone have a question? If you want to do the little question mark or raise your hand, um, I can continue on and go on to my next slide is more about conventions. So for some of you, it sounds like this is really new. This will hopefully be a little bit helpful if you attend um, conventions coming up. So, okay. So I just pulled a quick sample agenda. Um, I want to highlight sample agenda. <laughs> um, not every event is going to be the exact same and definitely not every state is going to be the same. So this is just a, a sample of a two-day two or an overnight convention. Um, I hope hopefully you guys can see. So starting off we have registration, um, opening session where we have um, some keynote speakers that we invite and then we have lunch. I don't know if you guys can see here but we have a mandatory teacher meeting um, in Southern California, we have it right after lunch. So we go over rules and you know various um, outline for the convention. Then we have for students and also for you guys, if you guys are interested, blocks. We call them blocks. They're basically sessions, um, opportunities for students to pick where they want to go. Um, they have opportunities ahead of time to register to be a speaker. And depending on um, the availability, they might get selected to be a pro or a con for something like this. And these blocks go for a certain amount of time. We have a few throughout the day, and then we go into evening activities, key dis distribution. They will be staying at a hotel, so they have their room keys. They have dinner again, and then we have chapter caucus, various nighttime activities, and then basically the next day, we reverse it. We have more blocks, oh, and then we end with a closing session here. And this is where we have, you know, the wrap up of the event and awards and various things like that. So this is just a general overview, the topics, all of that times subject to change. Hopefully they do every year. They revamp and get um, more uh, timely. But just for anyone who is brand new and never been to a convention, just here's a little bit of general um, information. You'll also find this online. We have our registration packets for all of our states. And most of them, if not all, will have a sample agenda. Okay, so different roles of a TA at a convention. So they're slightly different. They're a little bit more hands-on. At a, a chapter level, you, you, know, you do want to set back and let students lead. And you do want to do that there, but you definitely want to make your presence known. You want to, for one, help set the tone and prep your students for the convention. So I'm keeping in mind, you know, you've registered and you're, you've got all the paperwork and you're there and you're ready, but help them prep. So set the tone, let them know that they're representatives of your school and what that means and what expectations you have. Let them know if there's anything that your school requires of them. For example, are they allowed to go off campus? 
um, off you know campus meeting the hotel and go get lunch on their own do they need to check in with you ahead of time make sure you have all their cell phone numbers things like that especially if it's a larger chapter or if you're a parent and you may not know all of the students who are there you want to at least have a way of connecting with them a cell phone number things like that so you can call or text if you don't know where they're at another really important thing is moral support so hopefully your students will be signing up for debates and if they've never debated before or if it's a really um, difficult topic go watch them debate go sit in the room um, you know encourage them and you know maybe provide them a little bit of feedback and um, that also goes into the educational mentor role they may be exploring topics that they don't quite fully understand especially on a, a state level they may have different topics that they've never even heard of before and especially with um, the the diversity of chapters they're more than just the the chapter members that they're used to they're brand new students potentially and they may have questions right so that you get to be there and chat with them this is why i really like teachers but parents can do a really great job of this as well you know do a little debrief after um, the, the convention or after you know the first day how did they um, what did they go sit in on what did they talk about did they do um, what we call a subsequent speaker so even if they weren't selected to be a main speaker they can go up afterwards and um, speak either pro or con on those topics so that's a really great opportunity for you guys as well we're going to get into supervision a little bit more on the next slide, but this is also really big. So you have your whole chapter and we have a whole lot of chapters. We really need our TAs to help with this. We cannot watch every single student. We can't be in every single debate room. So, you know, if you want to help with this, even if they're not your chapter members, you know, help supervise and be a presence in the room. Um, disciplinary and knock on wood that we don't have anything with your chapter, but there are you know really great students who sometimes make bad decisions and if they you know try to to get away with drinking or things like that we often find out and we have uh, strict rules they will be sent home we'll have to notify the um, parents and the um you know principal or administration on campus um and so that you'll be pulled in on that conversation as well so when if anything happens you're, you'll be our first point of contact to help us address the situation but Hopefully, like I said, knock on wood, nothing bad happens, um, but sometimes things do happen. And then, uh, like I showed in my sample, we have um, the, a teacher advisor meeting, which just to give you guys a heads up, we will go over some of the rules and things in much more detail there. So if I'm talking really fast and it's kind of going over your head, or if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, that's going to be a really great place to, to go over this a little bit more uh, and get a little bit more detail. So I'm going to pause there. Do we have any other questions? Um, anything that people want to add that maybe if you've been to a convention before that you have some uh, uh, feedback? And I know that you guys are muted, but I hope, hope you guys know how to raise your hand or do the little question mark thing next to your name that I know that you have a question. Okay. Um, so next, let's go a little bit more into these supervision roles. So for one, like I said, general supervision. Um, even though if they're not your chapter members, being present is helpful. Um, it really helps, um, you know, having an adult in the room. Now you don't have to, you know, it is a long weekend, potentially you'll go sit in our chapter or our teacher lounge, um, maybe do some work if you have grading or things to do or bring a book or whatever, that's totally okay. But we also invite you to join and sit in the rooms, especially if there's a topic that you're really interested in. You want to hear the, the students, you know, debate. That's a totally, um, you're more than welcome to do that. In fact, I, I really encourage it. But we also have general chapter supervision. So at room, at registration, we need you there to get the um, chapter packet. So name tags and, you know, things like that. We can't have students alone. We need to make sure that they're with their um, TA or their chaperone. And then later in the evening, usually around dinner time, we give out room keys. We, I at least give them out to the 
teacher. Um, from my understanding, that's common practice. You know, I don't want to give room keys to students and, you know, who knows what. I want you guys to be in the loop, so I give them out to you guys. Um, at the end of dinner, when you guys come back from dinner, we have chapter caucus. So we often allow students to go off to dinner and lunch, you know, whatever, on their own. They don't have to stay in the hotel. It's not mandatory by JSA rules. Your school may have different rules, um, so definitely defer to that. But we definitely allow them to go off, but we need to know that they're all back. So that's why we have chapter caucus. We also have announcements at the end of the day, various things for you know nighttime activities or things like that. But it's a really great way to just do roll call. And then room check. So for all of the, the students that you have, you'll go to those rooms and you'll have you know the list of, of where they are. Go and knock on their door and make sure they're in there. We love these kids and we trust these kids, but only so far as we can throw them, right? We need to make sure they're all there. And um, an overnight event sometimes um, encourages some, um, you know, exploration and challenging some of those boundaries. Really just go knock on the door, see that everyone's in there, make eye contact with everybody, and let them go to bed. Um, we have in SoCal, um, curfew is at midnight, right? So it may be a long day, the next morning sleep in, that's totally fine unless you have other, you know, morning um, check-ins or whatever that you do. Um, but feel free to sleep in if you need to, but we definitely need you at that evening room check. We will have other people doing floor checks and, you know, RAs or, or staff doing um, security and rounds like that. But we definitely need you because we, we can't check every room. So that is a huge opportunity for you to, um, to help, help us and, and help our students. So I will pause really quickly to get a drink of water. Great opportunity for you guys to ask a question, raise your hand, or do the little question mark sign. Um, Nick, Nikki? Yes? Did you have a question? I have a little exclamation point next to you. I did not. Oh, okay, so I have no idea what that's doing. Maybe you're just- but Hi. Yeah. I did. Okay. So I'll put you back on mute. Um, yeah. So if, if you guys do, you know, raise your hand or do the question mark. Um, and definitely if you, if you don't want to ask a question now, my information will be at the end and you can um, touch base with me uh, through email afterward as well. Okay. So the start of our tips, um, tips for a strong chapter, especially if your chapter's new. Um, but this is really great just as a reminder for the, the start of the school year is um, develop strong leadership. So hopefully you guys know your students, hopefully you have um, classes with them or some kind of relationship with them and you're able to connect with them and help them develop those skills of what it means to be a strong leader, right? Communication, planning, goal setting, all of that kind of stuff. Work with your students to develop chapter activities, right? And hopefully some really fun, cool activities, right? Like um, getting involved in local government or doing some kind of on-campus activism, things like that, so that it's more than just a debate club, because really we are more than just debate. Attend your chapter meetings. So like I said, I, I'll say this again and again, having a presence in the room is really powerful. So you don't have to run the meeting, but try to be there. Um, open your classroom up if you can to the chapter meetings either during lunch or after school, and work, do whatever you gotta do, but be there. That helps set the tone for the meetings and make sure that they don't become like a social club, that they stay educational and um, political and things like that. We also encourage our students to attend one days and conventions. So one days are little mini cons. Um, we do some on the state level, but also chapters do their own. And we have the information online, Facebook, and on our website and things. You know, encourage that your chapter members go to that, right? We don't need um, TA supervision at one day, so you are more than welcome. But definitely conventions. These are also really great opportunities to connect with other chapters outside of your own school, other chapter members. Um, so encourage students to get involved in state cabinet. We will have mid-year applications for various state leadership roles that that information will go out probably after fall state. So depending on when your fall state lands, 
but in the middle of the year we will have positions open where even if you didn't get in yet you can you, they can step in so if you have some strong students that you think could get involved in a little bit more um, you know higher up levels you know totally promote that we also have summer school in institutes which are really great opportunities they get to go on college campuses, they get to explore college level curriculum, be in a classroom with college professors or hear from some high level speakers. And those are really great opportunities to gain more leadership skills and connect with people, not even their state, but even outside the, the country um, or in totally different states or even some of our territory areas. And then of course, encourage student activism on campus, off campus, really do that work. Okay, next slide. So suggestions for chapter activities, right? This is just a brief list, but this is a really great place to start if you're new. And even if you've been around for a while, but you've never done something on this list, maybe talk to your chapter president about doing something like this, right? So really basic is thought talks, which are a little bit less formal, more of a conversation and debates. You know, we have uh, pre-selected pro and con sides, Thought Talk is much more conversational, um, very good for new chapters, or if you have new chapter members, um, maybe do this after you have a big recruitment session and you have new faces in the room. This would be a great opportunity for a Thought Talk. Guest speakers, right? Local council members, local um, school board members, things like that. Invite them to come and speak about what they do to your students. Um, depending on the, the season or the year, um, host debate watch parties. Um, or if there's like a state of the, the union address, right? Maybe do something around that. A uh, really great opportunity for voter registration drives. Uh, also a really great opportunity for recruitment by doing these things, especially uh, fight apathy campaigns. So we have stickers that we give out to chapters that they can uh, get through me, um, as well as Gabe Avalos, our national director of fight apathy. And it just says, I believe in, and they can write whatever they believe in. This is a really great conversation starter to realize that, you know, politics is more than just, you know, high level, you know, military strategy and, you know, things like that. It could be, you know, I believe in healthier food in my campus, on, you know, in my cafeteria, things like that. Um, attend council, council meetings, uh, write letters or make phone calls to elected officials, uh, volunteer for a local campaign, or if there's a local, um, you know, proposition or something going, you know, um, you know, person running for a, a position or something, maybe volunteer, um, go to a museum or something other educational after camp, after school, um, host your own one day, right? You can definitely do it on your own chapter level. Uh, great opportunities to engage other clubs and other um, students on campus, and then invite other people from other local chapters to come as well. Uh, volunteer and so much more, right? JSA is more than just debates. It is a whole lot more. And that leads me nicely into the Chapter of the Year Award. So every year we give out a Chapter of the Year Award. Um, in every state, we have one Chapter of the Year. And these are the five criteria. Um, political awareness, right? So knowing what's going on, civic engagement and activism, right? On campus as well as off. Um, leadership, community service, and JSA participation, right? So this is a really great breakdown of what chapters could be doing, right? Beyond debates or thought talks, these are what we, this is what we want our students to be doing in every chapter around the, the country. So we have the information available online. There's a link that I can send out afterwards, but you, any chapter can do this at the, the information online shows you how to do the presentation at the end of the year and then one chapter will be selected and then those chapters will go on to um, be judged for a national civic impact award really great we offer scholarships and special uh, recognition and awards for these chapters so i highly encourage you to talk to your chapter leadership about this um, some really cool stuff that our students are doing out there. And I like it because it's an opportunity to showcase that on the state level. Okay, so any other questions? I don't see any hand raised. I do see exclamation points, but I don't think that means a question. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, feel free, you can also chat me a question. So if that comes up, let me know. Okay. 
So this is something that a uh, great opportunity to share with your chapter leadership, your chapter president, vice president. Stay organized. So paperwork, forms that need to be turned in, permission slips, things like that. Make sure you're organized, um, that you know the dates and deadlines and you're messaging that to your chapter leaders as well. Know who they are and let them lead. So work with them to set um, goals, work with them to you know, hit those deadlines, um, but let, let them do the work. Um, sometimes they will not meet those goals and that in itself is a great opportunity to learn from them and correct and you know if they miss the deadline for registration early registration you know you can still register for a convention at the regular rate and you know now you guys need to fundraise to hit that goal or something right it's a great opportunity to, to figure that stuff out um, ask for help from me from your school administrators from other teachers definitely let us know if you're struggling with something um, there are awesome teachers who have been around for a long time that we can connect new teachers with. Um, if there's a teacher who's been around for a while and you want to try something new, reach out and we can help grow that. Um, and you know that also goes to think outside the box, right? We gave some really great examples of chapter activities, but is there something that you would like to work with your students to grow and develop on an even you know, stronger level? Uh, for example, I'm working with a, stu uh, a teacher right now to promote a civic project on a state level in SoCal across the board and host a um, showcase of all their work at City Hall, LA City Hall later on this uh, school year. So things like that, you know, really work with these students um, and, and, and have them, you know, really doing that, you know, larger level activism and um, community service. And of course, stay engaged, right? Ask questions, um, come to conventions, be involved, um, have a presence. It's always really good to, to do that because then you see what the, these students are doing and the great work that they're doing. And it's really quite um, invigorating as well. Okay, so I want to maybe unmute you guys if I can figure out how to do that <laughs> um, and ask if you guys have come up with any uh, trouble on campus or trouble starting up a chapter. Catherine, you're unmuted. Marie, I don't know how to unmute you. Nikki, uh, Rafa, Beth, mm -hmm. Andrew, I think that you came a little bit late so I wasn't able to say hi to you. Um, okay, so you guys are all unmuted. So is there anything that you guys have had um, so far that you have trouble with that you would like uh, to brainstorm a solution for or would you like to go into the problem scenarios that I have? Um, this is Nikki. It seems like our um, main problem, since we are a middle school, we have several, we've got a feeder high school, and um, we've had some kids go off to the high school, and we've tried to get a teacher sponsor there, and so that's been kind of difficult. We've got a few students that are very willing, but it's hard to find a willing teacher sponsor, and we want to kind of keep that going because we get them amped up in middle school, and they get going, and then sometimes they go into a high school that doesn't have a program and so they kind of their JSA career ends there so um, that's been something that we've been working with and kind of coming up against an obstacle with okay now um the other adults on the line you guys are unmuted so if you guys have a, a solution um, I would like to hear it I would like to hear from you first before I offer a suggestion No? Okay, we got a lot of shy people. <laughs> totally fine. I don't mind. Okay, um, so I'm going to mute everyone but Nikki. I'm going to unmute you, Nikki. So uh, you are okay. unmuted, but I'm, I'm going to offer a suggestion. Um, so first I'm going to ask a quick question. Are you able to um, attend overnights as a middle school, or do you not? Are, are you not? Uh, yes, we do. We attend, uh, we've worked with Tracy Getzelman, and um, I think she's talked with you about it too. Um, we do tend overnight are the conventions. We went to all three conventions last year, and what we do with the middle school, we require one of their parents to go with them at least, and we stay off-site, so we don't stay at the same hotel as the high schoolers to just kind of give space and distance and, you know, respect to the high schoolers to do their high school thing. Um, so we usually stay off-site at another hotel close by, and then um, the teacher advisors will kind of, will 
take over in the morning, parents drop them off in the lobby of the convention site. We take over and they are our responsibility for the day. And at the end of the day, we release them back to their parents. Okay, yeah. I mean, I've heard some scenarios where, you know, very, very rare, but I've heard, you know, sometimes a middle schooler is allowed to come, but it's very rare. Um, so I would suggest maybe, um, and I apologize if you've already heard this before, but maybe go and meet with some of the advisors over there. Maybe if you can um, have... Well, they don't have advisors there. That's the problem. Oh, like yeah, potential, potential advisors or principals right. like that. Um, we have. <laughs> we've gone over. They have speech and debate actually as a an elective there. So we've met with the speech and debate teachers and we've talked with them and they just kind of have other things going on. And yeah. we've, they've come to some of our, we've hosted um, parent nights and... Um, one days and things like that at our middle school and um, we did have the speech teams teacher come over and some of their students wanted to do it but I guess they took a vote and they said that JSA was a little too structured and as a whole their speech team did not want to do JSA but I know that we do have some other students over there so I don't know um, I think if they had a, an advisor willing they might have a following but it's you know, it's hard to kind of find, it's a big commitment, you know, so it's hard yeah. to find. Yeah, and so that's the challenge is, you know, finding that balance, like I talked about earlier, that you may have um, some interest, but really pulling the teacher level, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's really challenging. So right. um, I have a suggestion that came in, take some high school teachers to the convention with you so they can see what it's about. Um, mm -hmm. They don't have to be history or speech and debate teachers. So, uh, Catherine, would you like to, um, you're unmuted, if you would like to elaborate a little bit? No, I just thought maybe if teachers don't like to do things if they don't know what they're really getting themselves into. So if they thought, right. if they saw it firsthand, sometimes that's mm -hmm. the best way to get somebody involved. So if you just took somebody to the convention with you, then maybe they would be willing to start it up at their school too. Right, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, definitely, we kind of have a link with, I don't really know what the structure, they have a speech club, so I don't really know what they do or, or um, you know, and for several years now we've been talking to to the lady over there and, I mean, she she's come to some of our things that we've hosted at our school, um, but yeah, I'll definitely kind of put that out there and see if she wants to come and come to a convention, that's a good idea. Well, she'll she have seems kind of willing, time. but, I'm well, sorry? She'll have such a good time. She'll just want to sign up right away. Right. right. <laughs> you you might ask an English teacher. I mean, you don't. They don't have to be. They could just be an interested party. Mm -hmm. They don't have to necessarily be speech and debate because right. Somebody who's interested or active in the school in some way. Mm hmm. So. Yeah. We'll definitely keep plugging away. For the last couple of years, we have gone over there and glad handed and. <laughs> Use the gift of gab, and we, you know, just kind of darken people's doors and shook hands, and you know, people are always, uh, I think, a little bit shocked that we're there, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, 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 we'll definitely come over, whatever," and nothing really. Well, snag the new guy. Happen. That's what our school did. I was the new guy this year, and they're like, there "You, you got to do things," and I just said, "Okay, <laughs> find the new person." There you go. <laughs> I I love all of these things. So, um, one thing that I was gonna suggest. Um, and I'm going to mute you guys so that you guys, um, to limit background noise. So uh, if you know, if you have another question, feel free to raise your hand. Um, one thing that I was going to suggest is, you know, realize, realize that you can also bring teacher, uh, parents rather. Um, so if you have the interested students, um, you know, those eighth graders who have graduated and gone on to that middle or that high school, they can mm -hmm. come with a, a parent, right? So they don't have to, oh, I didn't actually mute you ladies at all. So. I don't know what I did. Okay, sorry. I just heard an uh-huh, and I was like, wait, I thought I figured that out. I'm still learning, you guys. Okay. Um, so if you have the interested students, invite their parents to be chaperones. They're more than welcome to, to be chaperones. We like teachers because that really helps root it on campus. And, you know, once a, a student graduates and that parent graduates as well, then we lose that chapter. But, you know, for the interim, have a, a, a parent chaperone. I would also recommend, like... Um, Catherine suggested invite them to just come for a little while to a convention um, if they feel like it's too structured 
you know, let them know that there is also social time, that there are fun, um, you know, challenges and debates and um, fundraisers that we do, and that there is a much larger community beyond, um, you know, debating and winning gavels, right? I've had um, students come as guests, um, students and, and teachers come as guests just for a little bit of time. And, you know, you don't have to pay, just come check it out for an hour or two, sit in on a debate or two, and just, you know, see what it's about. And remind teachers that, you know, you guys can take shifts if you can stay during the daytime and a parent does nighttime or something like that. There's a lot of different opportunities. And, you know, what we suggest and what we have um, in our, you know, chapter startup guide doesn't necessarily have to be the way that you do it on campus. You know, make it work for you. And if that means that, you know, the middle school teachers are having after school meetings and some of the high school students are coming or, you know, doing a phone call, Skype call afterwards to make sure that you guys are ready to attend conventions and you chaperone them with their parents or something as extra support, you know, maybe that'll be a great way to start it off. Okay, so um, we can kind of maybe save some time. That was a really great uh, question. You will definitely run into some um, trouble with, um, you know, getting some of that buy-in. And Nikki, it sounds like you are really doing a great job as an advocate. So I applaud you. Um, I would also suggest maybe bring Tracy in, um, have her do a phone call or something, or if she's uh, on a trip to the, the area you're in, maybe she can do a pop-in visit. Um, but, you know, definitely, you know, that's a good opportunity to include your program director when you have a problem like that and brainstorm some solutions outside of, um, you know, just you, you, you know, we, we can also help in that role. Um, so chapter drama, you guys may have experienced that as teachers or as parents, you probably know how to deal with, um, you know, teenager drama. So, uh, we don't need to go too in depth in that one. And, um, you know, convention mishaps, you know, if something happens, you know, that's a, a, a thing that we can go over. But if you guys are new and you guys haven't had anything, knock on wood, you won't. But one thing that I wanted to hit home with these is these are really great opportunities to um, get help from other people. So your chapter leadership, your staff partner, um, things like that. We're, we're here as resources as well. So uh, a little bit of a refresher, right? Um, and I'm just noticing now Northern California is a little bit of a typo, so please don't pay attention to that one too much. Um, but this is the junior state of America, right, with a few of our chapter um, chapters on our territory islands. Um, but for the most part, you know, this is where we are. And I think if anyone's wondering, I think Alaska falls to NorCal and Hawaii falls to SoCal. So we'll see about some, you know, expansion trips or something out to Hawaii. That would be really cool. Um, so keep in mind, you know, where you're at. If I don't know if the actual state lines would be a little bit more helpful, but um, from there, this is who you guys can reach out to. So I'm Yvonne England. I'm the Southern California Program Director. Um, this is my email and my cell phone. Um, I provided my cell phone because I am based in SoCal, so it's the best point of contact for me. Um, you can call me, text me. Uh, you can also send me an email and ask any questions that maybe I didn't cover tonight. Um, but these are the other program directors um, or senior program directors. Some of them, Steve, Elizabeth, and Ed, are both are all three senior program directors. And these are the uh, the areas that they manage, right? The states that they um, direct. Um, and here's their contact information. So hopefully you guys were able to scribble that down. I can also email it to you afterwards. And going on to our very last slide. So it sounds like most of you guys are new. So some next steps to get you moving, right? So for one, if you haven't registered on my JSA, this is the link to do so. I don't know if it's clickable on your site, but it is for me, but I'm not gonna click it. Um, this is where you register, and especially if you're gonna attend uh, state level conventions, we would need you to have a uh, my JSA account as well as all of the students in your chapter. It's really quick, basic information so that we can um, keep track of who's um, attending and all that kind of fun stuff. Also, just in general, JSA.org. Um, we will have a new site coming up soon. I don't know when, but the old site is still pretty useful. We have information on our um, 
Council of Governors, our national um, cabinet members, as well as um, information about um, uh, resources and things like that. The next slide or the next link that there that's the link for our resources. So if you go to jsa.org slash downloads, there's a ton of really great stuff, including the packets for um, convention packets. And um, if you go even farther down, there's a link for chapter resources, and there's some really great stuff on there. I also highly encourage you to connect with your state's Facebook page. There will be really great announcements through that, and get your students to follow it as well. Um, you'll have information on one days, and we have an updated calendar and everything like that. And sometimes we have so many resources, so it's it's challenging to get them all together as one. But Facebook is always a really great resource. So I have left a little bit of time. If anyone has any further questions, um, if anyone wants to raise their hand, I can unmute you. Um, I can also go back to this slide um, so that you guys have a little bit more time to, to find your program director. I would recommend that you guys make contact, especially if you're brand new. Um, make contact and find out of any upcoming dates. Um, maybe get a calendar, um, just say hi, whatever. Um, this would be a really great person to, to, to reach out and um, ask any questions that maybe I didn't cover, but definitely feel free to reach out to me as well. So, I don't see any other hands up. Um, okay, I think that we're pretty good. So, I just want to thank you guys for taking about an hour of your time um, and dedicating it to your students and to JSA. We definitely need you. We definitely couldn't do it without you guys. Um, you guys, as you know, Nikki knows, right, it's really great when we get your adult buy-in and you guys are willing to work with us and your student leaders and have successful and strong chapters on campus. So hopefully I provided you guys with some, you know, good information tonight. This is definitely just a starter. So if you guys need anything else, feel free to reach out, connect with us, ask questions. Um, we love to hear from you guys and we love working with you guys. So thank you. Um, and that's about it. So have a good night, you guys. All right, so we are not recording anymore. So if you guys want to ask a question, I don't think it's recording anymore. I may still be recording. I'm not really sure, but okay, no new hands. Okay, thank you guys. Have a good night.